Hello, it's George from Australia, and welcome to Gaming My Whole Life, where I discuss everything video game related, past, present, and future. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to do a bit of a deep dive today. As you all know, the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack has been announced a little while ago. We were told that we would be getting Sega Mega Drive games and Nintendo 64 games on top of the already original Nintendo games and Super Nintendo games which were already provided to us. The big deal that everyone is talking about right now clearly is the price. Now I'm going to be real with you all right. When I was hit with that price like there's a reason why I didn't react until now. I was in literal shock as to how much money they were asking for. Right? I'm like this is way too much. Like I was thinking 10, 15 dollars more at most and instead <laughs> they like doubled the price and a little bit. I'm like, holy smoke, this is horrible. But me being a man who is passionate as I am, I'm very driven by facts and the actual reality of things. I'm like, all right, taking my emotional reaction aside, because you know, I lost it for a bit, right? But I kept the thoughts to myself. I'm like, right, how does this actually hold up against the PlayStation Plus, right? I'm going to compare Nintendo and Sony, and I'm going to be real with you all from right now, right? So I'm not dangling you here. The online Nintendo Switch service holds up so much more than I expected, right? Like, originally, before I put this video together, my whole thing was going to be, right, I'm pretty much going to bag this because it costs way too much money, but I want to get the finer details so I simply know what I'm talking about. And by the time I was done with my research, I was like, oh, this... This actually isn't the ripoff that I thought it would be. So let's get into it. Like always, if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I release multiple videos every single week talking about every single thing you can think of. The main selling point is that I do not chase and follow pointless trends. I'm not going to be raging against things for no reason other than clickbait. So if you if you appreciate that and a YouTuber, subscribe, go through the backlog, you and I are going to get along. With that being said, let's get to it. Alrighty, facts. Let's talk numbers. That's the best way to go about this. So we're going to start with the Nintendo Switch expansion online. I'm going to be talking in Australian dollars, so AU. Obviously, you can do the, your own math for your own currency, but the differences between the Nintendo service and the PlayStation service is going to roughly be the same, but in your own currency. Now, in Australia, if I want to get the new expansion pack, it is $60 a year, right? On its own, $60 a year. Now, if we compare that to Sony's PS Plus Ultimate Membership, I'm comparing the most premium versions, by the way, because I feel that's the best way to go about it. The Sony version is $80. So $60 a year for Nintendo, $80 a year for Sony, but it's not that simple, right? It's in the finer details where this all falls apart and gets really, really fascinating, to be honest. So $60 a year for the Nintendo membership, and that will include um, all the Nintendo games that are already available, all the Super Nintendo games, all the Nintendo 64 games, all of the Sega Mega Drive games, and all of the games that Nintendo plans in uploading in the future, and obviously, you know, online to, and sorry, and obviously access to all the online features. Sony, um, quite different. You pay $80 a year, you get the PS Plus membership that lets you do online, that lets you do, you know, reliable voice chat that gives you a better online connection. If you play an online game on the PlayStation versus playing an online game on the Nintendo Switch, you are typically going to get a much better experience with Sony, that, that's a given. But Sony does have a really big advantage here, right? Now, it may be $20 extra a year, but... That is with unlimited accounts on your PlayStation 5. So say you live in a household and there's like freaking five of you, right? As long as one of you are paying for the uh, PS Plus membership and that is the main account, that, that is the main thing that's logged in when the system is booted up, even if there's another five um, accounts that are also linked to that same console, you all get access to the features, right? However, Nintendo, this is where they get pricey, but I did some extra digging and it's not that bad. So, you all live in the same house, you have a PlayStation 4, you have a PlayStation 5, one of you pays $80, or you split it between all of you, boom, you're done, you're good, you're laughing. Nintendo gets you, unfortunately. Even though initially they are $20 cheaper, that's for one account. If you want to have multiple accounts on your Nintendo Switch console, then you have to go for the family pack. Family is $110. Now, 
off the set, this may seem like a huge deal. It's like, well, that's stupid. So if you live in a house where there's more than one person who wants to play on the system, with Sony, it's $80. With Nintendo, it's $110. That's a clear difference, right? Firstly, yes. Secondly, there is a massive purposeful loophole that Nintendo has kept in, right? That they've kept there. I have no idea why they have it, but I kid you not. Uh, here's the price here. If I really, really wanted to save money, I can actually have that Nintendo expansion paths path for a year um, for $13.75. So I read the finer details, right? I like doing my research. If you appreciate that, again, please subscribe because I, for the most part, know what I'm talking about most of the times. Um, with the family pass, that is not limited to the one Nintendo console. You heard that right. So anyone who's actually interested in having the Nintendo online service, all you need to do is reach out to all your buddies who also has a Nintendo Switch console and you can all be linked to the same main account and you can, and that supports up to eight, up to eight different accounts, right? So if you have the $110 a year for the family expansion pass, right? But that includes up to eight people and you all have your accounts and you're all paying your fair share, you're only paying $13.75. That's what I mean by it's in the finer details and just very handy. You know, if you want to play, um, if you have a Nintendo Switch and you want to play, you know, against your cousins, against your uncle, against another family member, against another friend or whatever, right? Um, in the world of Sony, you're all going to have to have that, you know, PlayStation Plus membership, that $80 each, and that really adds up, obviously. Whereas with the Nintendo family plan, you can all be on that one plan paying $13. So, see, at the front, it may seem, ooh, 110 compared to 80 that's a ripoff, but you break it down. If you're not all playing on the one PlayStation console, then that doubles, then that's 80, 160, 240, and so forth. Now, before proceeding, I am not going to be including um, Microsoft's Game Pass in this argument. I have already previously done a separate video um, on the value of Game Pass, why it's a no from me, which was literally the title of the video. So if you're interested in my opinion, on the Game Pass, for whatever reason you came across this video and you're new to the channel, I'll have a link below in the pinned comment section. But for today, we're going to focus on Nintendo versus Sony because Nintendo brought their prices quite similar to Sony. So now they're really being compared to for the first time. But let's talk about features for a second. So with the PlayStation Plus, and I have PlayStation Plus, I am just as much of a Sony fanboy as I am a Nintendo fanboy. So putting this video together, I just wanted, you know, the best outcome as opposed to making my side look good, right? Now, Sony's online service, I'm extremely happy with. I really like it. I love the fact that every single month, there are two or three games in full that you can completely download. I have downloaded heaps of really good games that I've enjoyed, that I've saved a lot of money. It is linked to my PlayStation Plus um, subscription account though, however. So those free games, if I ever stop my PlayStation membership, I don't have access to those games anymore. That being said, the PS Plus membership does give you huge discounts on games that already have discounts on the digital store. So I have bought games that are like normally $80, $90 for like $15, bucks, right? Like huge savings. And those games you buy while on the PS Plus membership, you get to keep them. So that's all cool. With Nintendo though, it is very different. Now, I, I know that a lot of people just compare them as if they're the same thing. No, no, it's very different. So... Sony definitely gives you free games every single month. If you happened to have been a PS Plus member during the times they're giving that, those awesome games, good on you, quickly download it. It is forever linked to your account. You're good. But you cannot backtrack. So let's say today, right, you're like, right, I'm going to get the PlayStation Plus membership. I'm going to get in there. And you do it because you've heard in the past, you know, um, they've had really good first-party Sony games and third-party games, like a whole range of games, which, you know, you've paid hard, hard money for. You can't go back and get it. Once that month is over, that's it. That's gone, right? You missed out on your opportunity. This is where Nintendo gets a surprise and advantage, right? So Nintendo has... A whole bunch of Nintendo games, right? A whole bunch of Super Nintendo games. Um, they're going to launch with a bunch of Sega Mega Drive, Sega Genesis for American viewers, games. They're going to start with at least nine Nintendo 64 games. And as the service goes on, they are going to, they're not on a schedule, but every once in a while, they're going to randomly hit us with more Sega Mega Drive games and more Nintendo 64 games. 
The difference with this is these games are not linked to simply what month is it right? It's not simply linked to what month. So say down the track, you're like, right, I want to get the Nintendo membership, right? I want to get the games. All of those games are all sitting there waiting for you and you can go through them, right? You can just make like a freaking month of it where you're like, right, I'm going to beat every Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64 Classic that they throw out this way, right? I'm going to get The Legend of Zelda and Mario Kart and Majora's Mask and Banjo-Kazooie and all these games, right? With Sony, you can't do that, but with Nintendo, that digital library just sits there and that is a nice advantage. You don't need to worry, hey, did I not download the game during that one month that it was free or whatever? Anyone, even a year from now, if you join Nintendo, you will get all the backlog games and all the games that Nintendo would have added. Whereas with Sony, you're not going to have, you don't have a digital library of free games just sitting there waiting for you, right? You can't join Sony tomorrow and be like, right, in the past, they've released like 30 amazing games or whatever. And, you know, now that I'm a member, I want to download them. No, nope, that chance is gone. And lastly, to address the biggest selling factor, of course, and that is the fact that these games are not available elsewhere. This is actually quite a big deal for Nintendo fans, right? It isn't like if you don't get the Nintendo Online membership, then you can just go elsewhere and you can buy like the Steam version of Majora's Mask. You can buy, you know, the Steam version of Mario Kart or other classics. Like, no, no, no. these are all exclusives, right? So not only do you have a buttload of games that are going to sit there and they're going to be available for you, but these are games you can't get anywhere else. Like short of going ahead and like, you know, buying a Wii U and backtracking and this and that. But as far as modern day options go, we're going to get a bunch of games you can't get anywhere else. Now, occasionally, um, Sony does give uh, Sony exclusives, right, that are part of the subscription membership. And again, value for money, I think it's great. For the most part, though, there are a lot of games that will be part of that monthly thing that you can buy elsewhere, that it isn't limited only to Sony. Whereas Nintendo, it's mostly exclusive. That's a big deal. Now, look, am I cool with the fact that they brought up the price? No, no, I'm, n I'm not cool with it. I thought it would just be part of the regular subscription. The fact you have to pay more, it does suck. But you know what? Considering the fact that if I want to, I can get all those Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Mega Drive, Nintendo 64 games. If I really want, I can get all of them for $13 a year if I break it up between my friends and I have enough friends to do it. I'm not going to complain about that. I'm not going to complain. It's up to you, my fellow viewer, if you feel it is worth your money. This video is not about judgment, me getting on a high horse, anything like that. I'm just saying if you take a step back and you look at all the smaller micro details and so forth, take into consideration the fact that you get a lot of exclusives that you literally can't purchase anywhere else. Take into effect that you know if you really want to abuse a family system, you can save a ridiculous amount of money. It shows that it's actually not that bad. It isn't as clear cut as, oh my goodness, the Nintendo Online experience sucks. Now they want even more money. Death to Nintendo. Like, it's not that simple. I know the internet will tell you it's that simple, but it's not. Anyways, I just wanted to create that balance and share my input. I will be getting it as I split things between my partner. You know, we're both very excited for the exclusive Nintendo games that we can't get anywhere else. And frankly, I still find myself playing the Super Nintendo. So I'm pretty happy in that respect. I'm going to, going forth, enjoy my Nintendo Switch expansion online membership. And I'm going to enjoy my PlayStation Plus membership because both of them, for different reasons, I think do a great job. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with me. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're living. This big, big planet of ours. God bless you all. Take care. I hope you're happy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And I'll see you all for the next video here at Gaming My Whole Life. All right. Talk to you all next time. Bye.